Adam, Adam, will you stop? Will you stop? I would. Dear mom, are you constantly, you know, upset and angry at your kids? I understand. These kids, they know how to really, really, really play with our nuts as parents. But today, we're going to learn together how to actually manage your anger as a mom and as a carer and as a nurturer that you are so that you can have an amazing relationship with your children. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is TSA Gregory Jonah and today I'm going to be sharing with you tips to manage anger as a mom. Like I mentioned earlier, children just have a way of you know playing with our knots playing with the keys and just literally just pushing it and if i say that i do not get angry or that you shouldn't get angry i'm just going to be hypocritical because we all are human beings and we all have limits but you see with children it's important for us to understand you know and be able to um, put a name and a label to whatever emotions that we're feeling so that we're not transferring so that we're sure that we're not transferring um, anger from somewhere else to our children and we don't damage our relationships with them. I mean, there were times that, even when as, a, as a child, I know when sometimes I've asked my mom, are you sure you're my mom? Just because of the way she used to, you know, get angry at me because I was constantly not listening. I was constantly, you know, just being naughty. And I am also, you know, I've, I've been exposed to that with my children i've seen them be naughty and then i ask you know talk to them about it and still they do it so i realized that what is important really is how we as a person manage our anger it's not even about the reaction that the person who is behaving towards us is doing but how we manage it so today i'm going to be sharing my you know tested and tried tips about managing anger especially for moms so i'm going to be sharing with you Five amazing tips that you can use to manage anger as a mom like I mentioned before as a mom we're constantly being triggered by our children you know but sometimes it's not like they mean it intentionally it's not like they want to do it intentionally so it's important that we first of all manage our own emotions so that we don't pass it on to our children by you know screaming and fighting and constantly yelling which doesn't bring about any you know great results it damages relationship with our children and it also doesn't help them to learn because then the information we're trying to pass is already lost in the yelling. So my number one tip is that you should keep a journal and take care of yourself as a mom. Um, most of the time, a lot of the times that we, we let off steam, we let off anger as moms is because of built up, you know, built up emotions that we haven't dealt with or built up stress. Sometimes it's just stress that we haven't dealt with and then when the kids just, you know, do something little our reaction is over the top as compared to what they've done so as a mom it's important for you to first of all you know look after yourself if you're tired if you're feeling like you're not up to a certain thing maybe going out maybe doing certain thing ask for help ask your you know your husband for help ask your kids for help so that you can reduce the stress on yourself and you can really get some you know um self-care so that you don't start to you know lash out and start to you know feel frustrated to the point that you're angry all the time and then you start to look like you know the angry mom around the house which i know that you know um kids don't understand sometimes but it's important that we you know try as much as possible to look after ourselves one of the things that i do is when i start to feel upset and i notice that i'm beginning to snap and all of that i would just ask myself to see what's going on what's happening do you want to take your work is it hunger is it cold? Sometimes cold, you know, being in a cold region can actually even trigger you to be, you know, snappy and upset. So look after yourself. Keep a journal. I keep a journal where I write things that I'm grateful for. I keep a journal where I write things that I'm not so happy about so that, you know, um, the days that, you know, I just want to go back and just look, you know, look at my life in retrospect and be able to like, okay, this is where I was. This is how far I've come. You know, this really helps me. You know, so I keep a journal of, and then I also keep a journal of my emotions, how I feel at certain times, how I feel at certain, you know, hours, you know, when I feel my, you know, ultimate best. 
so that I can start to look at the trend and the patterns that actually bring about this good feeling or this bad feeling. So it's important for you to look after yourself and, you know, keep a journal that shows you the pattern so that you can know how best to actually, you know, attack these things and then attack your day so that you can get, you know, the best results. Tip number two is for you to understand anger and how it affects you. Now, this is a build up on my first tip. And it's obvious that if you don't know what the problem is, it's difficult to fix it. So when you understand the anger and how it affects you, you understand the things that actually trigger you. Once you notice that the trigger is coming, it's easier for you to actually avoid it, prevent it, so that you don't go into that place where you're losing your mind and you're literally screaming down the entire house and your kids are looking at you like, what's wrong with mommy? Why is mommy always shouting? So pay attention to the things that trigger you. Pay attention to the things that make you scream, things that make you angry. And start to, you know, work your way backwards. How does this affect me? So when this happens, how do I feel? Oh, this is how I feel. How can I do this better? How can I do this differently? It's pretty much like, you know, putting a name to all of these emotions so that you can understand how it starts, how it progresses, and then how you can fix it so that the situation does not continue to repeat itself. Nobody wants a mother who is constantly shouting around the house. Because sometimes part of the reason why we shout is that we are, some of, us, some of us don't even understand the emotions that we're feeling. So we tend to lash at our frustration by shouting at our children, shouting at everyone around, which is not a, it's not a good sight. So understand the anger. Take out time to ask yourself, this thing that is happening, what starts it? What exactly is the thing that makes me to start to feel this way? How can I prevent it? Why is it happening? So that you can, you know, be able to totally, um, what's the word, and get complete understanding of it and then be able to manage it properly. Because like I said earlier, I'm not going to ask you not to get angry because you're definitely going to get angry. Things are going to happen that are going to, you know, touch your fuse. So what's important is you understanding what they are and then choosing how you want to react. Because if you understand what the problem is, if you understand what the triggers are, you can prevent, you can avoid. And then if prevention and avoidance doesn't work, you can actually adjust and then control how you react. You can manage your reaction towards it when it eventually happens. So it's, un it's important for you to understand the anger that you feel and how it affects you. Tip number three, learn and understand child development and age-related behaviors. So for example, I've got two boys and they're two different people. Adam is eight, Asha is four. So a lot of the things that I will expect Adam who is eight to do, I'm not going to expect that same understanding, maturity, and um, discernment for my son who is four, although he's equally very smart. So it's important for you to understand that as these kids are growing, things are going to change. You know, that's why we have the terrible tools, um, then, the, then the teenagers and all of that. So with different developmental um, stage comes different kinds of behavior. So you need to understand that whatever it is that they're doing at, at a particular point in time, ask yourself, is this as a result of the stage where they are in life? Is this as a result of something I'm not doing? Once you understand that this is as a result of the stage where they are in life, you know, it allows you to actually not beat up yourself about it. Because sometimes the things that we really, really fuss about, we never get results, especially when it is nature, when, you know, it's less dependent on us. So it's important that you understand that at this age, they will do this. Now, once you understand that, then you cannot come from the angle of intervention and say, okay, because this is happening, I can help my child to do better by doing this. Instead of just getting angry and lashing out and saying, oh, you're not listening, oh, you don't listen, oh, you are this, oh, you are that. No. Understand that at this age, this sort of behavior is expected. For example, when they're like, you know, the terrible tools is when they start to, you know, learn control and, you know, they want to do their own thing. That's when they keep saying no to everything. If you tell them to do this, they'll say no. That's because at that point, they are, you know, they are struggling with, oh, control, wanting to ensure that, you know, they can control things even with their little age. Once you understand that, you know the right kind of strategy to use to counter that behavior so that they act right, so that you help them shape up instead of just getting angry and losing your cool all the time. So definitely pay attention, learn and understand, you know, child, their development and age-related behavior that comes with whatever stage that they are in at any point in time so that you can manage your reaction towards those behaviors as a mom and then reduce how much you snap, how much you lose your cool because of your children. My number four tip to managing anger as a mom 
is to take a break, you know, leave the room, you know, go somewhere else. Sometimes, because, you know, we're in a little space with our children and our family, you know, we tend to get on each other's nerves, we tend to, you know, get upset to the point that we start to, you know, freak out. This happens to me sometimes when I've been in the house, especially in England, when I've been in the house for so long, you know, it starts to get to me and I start getting snappy, I start getting cranky. I just carry myself, take my earpiece, my phone, and I just take a walk, get some fresh air, you know, just take time out. You know, this really, really helps. It helps to clear your head. It helps to, you know, um, release tension because you've been in one space for the whole day or been in one space with these people or you've been in this space with this, your family for so long and you're just feeling, I don't know whether it's claustrophobic or just something like that. And then it starts to trigger this feeling of, Oh, you know what? I feel cramped. I feel this. I feel that. Then you start to snap. You know, it's okay for you to take a break. It's okay for you to leave the room. Or maybe, for example, it's just your son getting on your nerves. You know, there are days that Adam is just, you know, doing it. Adam is naturally just getting on my nerves. And I'm just like, Adam, I would just, you know, tell myself, no. I will grab my phone or just take something and just take time out. Or maybe... Even as little as just leaving the room, for example, maybe during winter and I don't want to go outside there in the cold, I will just leave wherever everyone is and just go and sit down in a quiet place for a little time. Most times I will go into the boys' room and just go and lock myself there for a couple of minutes just to, you know, kind of like calm myself down and, you know, get myself, take my time out and really just come back to life and, you know, different, refreshed and all of that. So it's okay for you to take time out. It's okay for you to take a walk. It's okay for you to leave the room where you're feeling, you know, angry so that you don't say things that you're going to be sorry about. You understand? You don't lash out in anger and then start to come back and say sorry to people because lashing out in anger, you know, words are like, you know, um, words are like eggs. Once they break, it's difficult for you to, you know, mend it together. So it's okay to excuse yourself from the room, excuse yourself from that particular space, take a walk, you know, go into your quiet space and just, you know, come back to life, come back to the place where you are, you know, um, in, a pla in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a state of calm where you're not losing your mind and all of that. And that, that's going to really, really, really help. So avoid the things that are triggering you. Stay away from it a little bit and then, you know, come back refreshed. So definitely take a break. Leave the room. You know, do your own time out and anything else that works for you really. So my last and final tip is to enjoy the journey of motherhood. Honestly, if anybody is telling you that, oh, it's going to be rosy all the way, you will not have any reason to complain, it's a lie. You're going to get angry. Your kids are going to get on your nerves. Your husband is going to upset you. Neighbors, um, work, um, different things are going to get on your nerves. But honestly, what I'm just going to say is make up your mind that you want to enjoy this journey of motherhood. Be intentional about the things that you freak out about. Be intentional about the things that you worry about, that you lose your cool about. You know, choose your battle, right? Choose your battle. Don't sweat the small stuff. Because as you sweat the small stuff, even that anger becomes irrelevant in front of the kids because then they get used to it. To them, it becomes a joke. To them, it's now, oh, that's mommy's character. Oh, that's how mommy does, you know? Be intentional. Tell yourself, this mother would, no matter how crazy or hard it is, I am going to enjoy it. That way, when the craziest of things happen, your reaction towards it would even um, be surprising to everyone. For To the things that they expect you to freak out, just smile. And guess what? Excuse yourself. For the things that they expect you to smile, if you're not feeling good about it, express yourself and move on. There is no need to... There's no need for negative energy, negative vibe in terms of anger around the house because you are like the pillar that holds everything in the house together. And you being in a happy state, you being in a calm state is something that the entire household is dependent on. So please, dear mom, enjoy the journey of motherhood. Let yourself be happy. Let yourself be celebratory in this season where you are nurturing and caring and loving your, you know, your, young, your young ones. And honestly, trust me, you would see a total difference in the way that you react, in the way that you communicate, in the way that you do, you know, carry, up, carry on with your duties and your responsibilities around the house when you're very intentional and you, and, you are, and you decide 
genuinely from within you to enjoy this journey of motherhood. So thank you so much guys for watching. I hope you've been able to pick one or two lessons to help manage your anger and manage your relationship with your kids as a mom. Honestly, it's not easy. And like I said, you know, we just need to be more intentional about it. If you're not following me yet, I don't know what you're doing. So you should hit the subscribe button, you know, like this video, share if you enjoy it and if you think it's value, you know, share it with people that you know will find it valuable, other parents like you. And if you're not following me on social media, let's follow each other. Let's, you know, let's communicate. Let's hang out. Let's chill. Um, I'm at TG Jonah on Instagram and on Twitter. And um, until next time, bye guys.